Hello everyone, my name is Jaybird and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. Without any further ado, let's get right back to where we left off last time. I soon come to realize that it is easier to walk around town now that everyone has forgotten who I am. The atmosphere around town feels brighter. All the spiteful, all the spiteful stares are gone. Princess Emmeline. Oh, how are you doing? Is your wife feeling better? Emmeline has responded to most of the people who know her. She seems to know a good majority of the people in town. I'm sorry for giving Emmeline this voice, by the way. I figure some of you watching this might get pissed off because I keep giving her this voice, but I honestly love it now. <laughs> it's just second nature to me. <laughs> I hang back as Emmeline speaks with the man. The night escort ho hovers in somewhere nearby, watching for disturbances. We are going to take longer than an hour if she continues like this. Don't you need to return to the palace to continue whatever work is, it is you? Ugh. Don't you need to return to the palace to continue whatever work it is that you were doing? Rod raises an eyebrow at me. I do have to get back to my studies, but my family always comes first. If this makes Emmeline happy, then I will gladly come, to it, come with her to town. It's a small thing. I look more closely at Emmeline. She is smiling, but then she always smiles. I do not understand. She's more at ease talking to the townspeople sometimes because they don't judge her. Why would she have to worry about being judged? It is clear that everyone adores her. Emmeline takes the man's hand in hers and she wishes him well. Rod points out the gesture. See that? That's goodness. You could learn something from my sister, Jaybird. Is goodness pretending to be interested in the lives of strangers? Oh my god. <laughs> Emmeline eventually says her goodbyes before walking toward the familiar store. This is the toy shop I visited with Emmeline and Rod before. I glanced at Rod and noticed the, the expression on his face. He seems... When I enter, Emmeline is already hugging the shop girl. Viorica. Viorica. Oh god. I forget the voice I gave her. It's been so long. Whatever. Emmeline, you look as beautiful as ever! I can hold my female characters either that voice or something. Please, I look the same. You, on the other hand. Emmeline steps back before nodding, a bright smile on her face. Being in love suits you. When is the wedding? Oh, shit, what? Wedding? She's already engaged? I get a small movement out of the corner of my eyes and turn to glance at Rod. I notice his fingers clench into a fist before he quickly hides his hand behind his back. Oh, maybe he likes this girl. Ooh. Though his, though his, <coughs> though his expression is as impassive as always, I notice a tenseness in his shoulders. Ooh, he likes this girl. Or maybe he hates her fiance. Did you want to hear how he said it did? But it should be soon. Would you Gather jails off when she notices the rest of us. Hello, Rod! <laughs> Viorica. His tone is, su is surprisingly static. Last time he was here, I was sure he sounded friendlier. So, what can I help you with, Emmeline? Looking for another doll? Another doll? But Emmeline is not interested in dolls. Oh no, I'm just here to see you! I can't stay for long since Rod has things to do! Emmeline, a 
I'll wait for you outside. Ow! Okay! I know it is my job to follow Emmeline around, but I am not at all interested in hearing her talk to this girl. Does she even want me here? Um, we're supposed to go outside. We're going outside. My time might be better spent trying to improve Rod's opinion of me. If I could get him to tell me precisely what I've done wrong, I can make up for it. And I hope that would give me a good deed. I curtsy to the two girls. Excuse me, your highness. I shall wait outside with Rod. I cough to clear my throat. Okay, I won't be long. I moved to stand next to Rod, who was leaning against the wall. Oh, hell yeah, we finally get a screenshot. Rod sighs in annoyance. Hell yeah, we finally get a thumbnail image. Yay. My happiness is... is strong. My happiness is happy. My happiness is happy. That's how happy I am. Finally, we get an image for the thumbnail. And it's like, I don't even set this as the thumbnail. I was like, ah, you thought I was gonna set this as the thumbnail. Well, you were wrong. Burger King, number 15. Burger King foot lettuce. The last thing you want in your Burger King burger is someone's foot fungus. But as it turns out, that might be exactly what you get. I haven't seen that um, video in a long time, so I don't know if I, what I said was accurate, but if it is, holy shit, yes. Why do you keep on following me? Tell me how to rectify whatever wrong I have done to your family. This again? I cannot help but scowl at Ron's answer. You spout all this nonsense about goodness, but refuse to help me. How is that good? You haven't given me a, any reason to help you. What? If you're not serious about genuinely learning to be good, how to be good, then I'm not interested in helping you. Maybe you can catch him off guard by bringing up his response in the toy shop just now. Fine, then I will make normal conversation. <sighs> then I will make normal conversation. Oh, wow. Who is Vic... <laughs> Has she done something to hurt your family too? Yorika is a childhood friend. She's not like you at all. Oh? Then why were you acting so cold to her? You obviously did not want to be inside the shop. Rod looks away from me at and absently kicks a pebble on the ground. Ah, see? I was right. That is none of your business. I sigh, disappointed with Rod's reaction. Rod turns away from me as Emmeline exits the shop. I'm ready to go. Emmeline nods with a smile again. With a small smile, the two of us begin to make our way to the palace again. Yay. By the time we return to the palace, every evening has fallen. I hope we're not late for dinner. The minute the carriage doors open, we are greeted by two familiar faces. Sir Alcaster and Sir Mithra stand for us. Is it a bit like Prince Rod? I was on my way to look for you when Sir Mithra informed me of your whereabouts. He glares at the knight escort and the knights and the knight shrinks back. Sir Alcaster turns sharply to me afterwards, his eyes narrowed. Why is he looking at me like that? I was getting it was getting late and the king was wor the queen was worried. I'm so sorry. Princess Emmeline, Prince Rod, it is almost time for dinner. Please let me escort you inside. Sir Mithros gest gestures for them to follow him. I'm about to follow after them when Sir Alcaster suddenly moves to block my path. His eyes are cold. He opens his mouth to say something, but then closes it and shakes his head. You are dismissed, girl. You may go back to your quarters. But... That is an order. His gaze is piercing. Even when I, I was a princess, I was not able to stand up to that gaze. 
Yes, sir. Oh, boy. After dinner, I make my way back to the room assigned to me. As I walk down the hall, I notice Rod heading in my direction. Rod? He suddenly grabs my arm and pulls me away down the hall. Oh, huh? What? <laughs> Where are you taking me? Rod does not answer and just continues moving until we reach an unfamiliar door. What is going on? Rod cuts me off by placing a finger on my lips. He looks around warily before finally pulling me into the door with him. Ooh. This place. I have heard of this place before, but have not have, but I've never seen it. Is this the secret passage that leads into town? Rod does not answer me. He simply keeps walking, and I see no other option but to trail after him. How is it that you know of this place? He still refuses to answer. Are you deaf? Rod suddenly stops and I bump into his back. I stumble back with a scowl. He's asked too many questions. Because he refused to answer any of them. I glare back at him. I glare back at him until Rod makes an exasperated sound. Lady Parfait is the one who told me about this passage. It makes sneaking out of a palace easier. expression suddenly lacking any emotion. With all due respect, your highness, I do not want to meddle with your wallowing. But just because you do not wish to break your curse doesn't mean that others shouldn't want to either. You should be humbled that our princess here thought you would be able to help her. Rod raises an eyebrow. Where is Lady Parfait? Of course you would want to talk to Parfait, because she puts things nicely. Fine, I'll fetch her for you. Delora curtsies as she sweeps out of the room. Rod sighs. He clearly looks irritated, but he doesn't put a voice to his agitation. Now that we're alone in the empty room, the silence is deafening. And so I ask him the question that has bothered me since we came here. Inside of me at first, but the, and then I notice that my hands are fists and that I am shaking. You were angry at me for treating your family with unkindness, and yet you do not treat me with any respect or kindness either. Excuse me? I realize. 
realize that this is the angriest I have felt in a long time and it makes words fall out of my mouth. You are guilty of the same disrespect you hold me accountable for. We are both being cruel to, a f to family, aren't we? <clears throat> Rod's, <laughs> to family. Rod's eyes are as ablaze, are ablaze as he stalks toward me. He stops right in front of me, his mouth pressed into a firm line. As you are so fond of telling Emmeline, we do not share any blood. The only thing pulling us together is the king, and we do not share his morals. Remember this, Jaybird. You will never be part of my family, and I will never see you as a sister. Rod storms out of the reception area just as Delora enters. Sorry, it looks, looks like Parfait was an in. She pauses, then gives me a weary smile. Seems like, seems this partnership is going well. I throw my hands up in anger. He is infuriating! Not as helpful, helpful as you thought. I was surprised you were asking for his help in the first place. All I have been doing today is falling around Emmeline and he's, and he still finds reasons, finds reason to snap at me. In his eyes, I can do nothing right, even though I am making an honest effort to break my curse. Delora eyes me as she slides down into a chair. Has he told you anything about his curse? Nothing useful. Delora sighs. Boys can be so secretive about the silliest things. Rod has been aware of how to break his curse from the very beginning. Then why hasn't he broken it? I have no idea. I think the only other person who knows the full terms and conditions of Rod's curse is Parfait. Parfait? Parfait has known Rod for a while. She convinced him to keep coming to the margin even after he gave up on breaking his curse. Parfait also thinks that working with you will convince Rod to try finding another way to break his curse. Another way? Don't ask me. I don't much Im I don't know much about his curse either. But if you keep trying to but if you keep Ugh. But if you keep trying you might convince Rod to talk. I doubt that very much. It seems that all I am doing is convincing Rod that I do not deserve to break my own curse. Delora looks at me curiously for a few moments. She then grins. I have an idea. If it is another terrible idea, oh no, this one is much better. I'll just stick around with you. You know, watch out for you. What? Delora, watch out for me? Oh no, she's gonna be dull. Knew it! Doll Delora! I am surprised when Delora suddenly stands before me in her doll form. There's no way you and Rod are going to sort yourselves out without any some kind of help. So I'll be tagging along. It's much it's much easier when I'm travel sized. Mm. Why do I feel like she'll only make things worse? Come on then. Delora somehow managed to jump into the front pocket of my apron, which is thankfully large enough to fit her doll prop to, to fit her doll body. Let us let's go find a us a prince and get ourselves back to the palace. Alright. Chapter 4. One step forward. One step forward. It has been more than a week since Rod and I returned to the margin. He has been avoiding me ever since that day. Well, guys, that's going to be it for this episode of Cinderella Phenomenon. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a like down below, leave a comment down below, share with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, ring that notification bell, and remember, die safely. Bye-bye!